taller than the famous Niagara Falls and a little more of a challenge to reach, this Arizona waterfall is a sight like no other. Also known as Chocolate Falls, the muddy water of the Little Colorado River gives this seasonal waterfall its nickname. So join me in this guide to Grand Falls, Arizona. Growing more in popularity every year, Grand Falls is a must-see for any adventure enthusiast visiting Northern Arizona. And maybe best of all, it's completely free. There is a bit of a catch though. Not only are the falls located deep in the backcountry of the Navajo Nation, there's also no guarantee that they'll be flowing. Part of the Little Colorado River the falls only flow during a period of snowmelt in the spring, or briefly after a heavy rainfall any other time of year, making planning a visit a little difficult. Your best bet to catch these muddy rapids are in the spring, notably the months of March and April. And there actually is a way to kind of check ahead to see if they're flowing. The United States Geological Survey has a monitoring station for the river just upstream near the town of Winslow, measuring the amount of water currently flowing. And you can check it on their website, link in the description below and also pictured here. Under the graph, click Discharge, cubic feet per second. And if the graph measures 400 feet per second and up, there's a pretty good chance that the Grand Falls are flowing. This past September, after a couple days of heavy rain, the monitoring station showed the falls flowing, so we packed our gear and left from Flagstaff, Arizona, about an hour away from Grand Falls. We took I-40 out of Flag, getting off at exit 211 for Winona Townsend Road. Take this for about two miles, where you'll turn right onto Loop Road. I hope I'm pronouncing that right which you'll stay on for about 15 miles before turning left onto Route 70 for Grand Falls. GPS, on Google Maps at least, is pretty accurate in guiding you to the falls, but I've included coordinates for important spots in the description below that you can punch into your maps. Also important to know is that cell service is pretty scarce out here. It's a relatively easy drive to the dirt road that takes you to the falls and through some pretty amazing volcanic fields, which you may remember from my guide to Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument. Video linked above. Route 70, the main dirt road to Grand Falls, is located on Navajo tribal land. And it's important to remember to follow local laws and customs, including no alcohol, off-roading, or drone flights without a permit. The road is pretty washboarded, but when dry, is passable by just about any vehicle. It can kind of be a catch-22 though if you're trying to visit the falls after a recent rainstorm. It could very well make the road a muddy mess. Proceed with caution. It is extra wide, so if there do happen to be any glaring potholes or puddles, they should be easy enough to go around. Stay on the road until you come to a three-way split. To the left, and most importantly, is Route 7038, which will take you to the parking lot and the first view of Grand Falls. The lot is huge, so you shouldn't have to worry about parking. There's also several pit toilets and covered pavilions that look down on the falls. From here, you'll want to head to the edge for that first look. You're free to walk the rim to get some different perspectives of the view. And if you have the time, there's even a primitive trail down to the bottom. It's only about a mile round trip, but the trail isn't really marked, is pretty rocky, and can be just a little bit steep in some parts. Oh, and the bottom is probably going to be really muddy, so you'll want some proper footwear. Follow the rim heading past the falls until you reach this turnoff, where you'll begin heading down. None of the scrambling is too intense, but the rock here tends to be kind of jagged, so just be careful. The falls should come back into view in no time. Simply head towards them until you've reached the bottom. 
I've also included a link to the All Trails map for this one in the description, just in case. The ground will probably start to get a little soft here, but trekking through the mud is definitely worth it for the amazing views you get from the bottom. The Little Colorado River is full of silt, which gives the falls their incredibly muddy appearance, and the nickname of Chocolate Falls. The only downside is, any mist from these falls also leaves a thin layer of mud on everything it touches. Not exactly great for camera gear. Grand Falls is over 181 feet tall. For comparison, the sometimes too famous Niagara Falls near my hometown of Buffalo is 176 feet tall. So yes, Grand Falls is in fact even taller than the mighty Niagara Falls. We spent around 45 minutes down here, snapping plenty of pictures and doing some filming. This was late in September, and the falls were going pretty good. During the spring snowmelt, or after an even bigger storm though, they're known to flow even stronger. As for the best time of day to visit, Sunset's Golden Hour is known to make for some absolutely amazing photographs. Unfortunately, a massive thunderstorm was brewing in the distance, and getting a little too close. So we decided to cut our time here short, just in case. And that was about it. It takes some proper timing and just a little bit of luck. But Grand Falls is worth all the effort.